Hi class, as I mentioned before in my first drawing exercise where we talked about the sphere, this time we're going to talk about the cube. I actually have a very nice nifty still life cube for this example, which I left on my desk in my classroom. It does me no good right now since I can't go get it. So I had to make this one out of a piece of foam board that I had here at the house. So it'll still get our point across as to the whole purpose of this activity here in just a minute. Okay, the cube. Whenever we're drawing anything, we need to use perspective because if we don't get our perspective right, then the whole idea of trying to create the illusion of three dimensions on a flat surface will be completely blown. The viewer might not know what's wrong, but there will be something wrong and it will bother them the whole time they're looking at it. Something will seem off. So what an artist does is they try to create the illusion of three dimensions, height, width, and depth, on a flat two-dimensional surface, which is your paper. Your paper only has height and it only has width, but it has no depth. So whenever we're doing perspective, whenever our object, our cube for example, is right on our eye line, we really won't see the bottom or the top. But as it moves below our eye line, we can see the top. And as it moves above our eye line, we can see the bottom. And then from side to side, as it moves, we can see different sides in different ways. And I'm going to show you how to draw that. Okay, perspective is an example of an instance when using a ruler is very, very important. Except right now, we're just trying to keep these videos short, so I'm going to try and move as quick as I can to explain it. When you start with your cube, if you can see only the side of it, then your cube will be going towards your vanishing point and it will look like this. Okay? If you're doing two-point perspective, like the cube we just talked about in the clip a second ago, then It will be like this. Okay, so we're going to work through a series of exercises where you can do this, but showing the different stages of the cube as it goes from left to right and up and down. Okay, we're going to start out with giving ourselves kind of a little crisscross. Now you're going to be doing this on smaller paper. I want you to go ahead and make sure you use a ruler with that. And we're going to create a cube right here using this line. So there's the corner of my box. Using a ruler. I'm just freehanding it, but I want you to use a ruler. Then you're going to create your sides for your cube. Make sure that these lines are vertical. They need to be straight up and down. They cannot slant. Then this one is going to go this way. And this one is going to go that way. And there's your cube. The neat thing is, once you get used to doing this, you don't have to draw all your lines. You can have your ruler lined up here and lined up here, and then you don't have to do all this erasing of these lines. As long as the two ends of the ruler are lined up, then you just draw your line segments as long as you have to. You're going to repeat this. using a ruler, remember, and you're going to continue going down your page. You'll have one on the center, two above, two below. Okay, 
We'll come back in a minute and I'll show you what I have. Okay, I've kind of started it here and I'm going to kind of on the other camera walk you through a few of the steps and show you some areas where you might make some common mistakes. Okay, so real quickly for the exercise with the cubes, I'm gonna show you some common mistakes that get made. Uh, most of the time, people forget about their vanishing points. They forget to draw the tops of their line segments towards that vanishing point. In the beginning, you can connect them, but eventually you get to where you don't have to. As long as they are lined up, then you just need to draw your line segment as far as you think your cube is going to go. You don't need to connect it all the way to your point. But a lot of times people will do that for the first cube, the second cube, the third cube, and then they just start going like this. And then they just say, say okay, it's gotta be slanted, and they lay their ruler like this. Or they lay their ruler, you know, like this. And they don't pay attention to this this dot and they forget that it's there and then they'll have one edge or one side of their cube that is completely off compared to everything else so you have to make sure that you don't forget about using your points your vanishing points as you're working on your cubes the other thing that uh, students often do is they draw these line segments and you tell them well you don't have to draw all the way to the point and then they'll draw two line segments like these two right here and they'll have like one that is slightly longer than the other typically it's the bottom one for some reason and then they'll just say okay and they'll connect them like that that's not correct a cube has vertical sides and that's not vertical look when I lay it right there compared to my middle line, they're not parallel and this is not vertical. You have to make sure that the sides of your cube, where they end, is parallel. This corner and this corner are part of the same side. It's probably gonna be too close, but like right here and right here. They're part of the same side. You can't have this side going like this and this side going straight up and down. So you got to think about these things. This is where being a very observant person will often put a student artist above and beyond everyone else, kind of ahead of the pack, because they're observant about things like that. They notice angles and lines and edges and how everything relates to each other and that's how you'll get a student who everybody's like well they just have natural talent no they're naturally observant that's what they are they're just super observant so they notice those things and they avoid those mistakes that other people make and maybe they make the mistake in their head but they don't make it on their paper so what you're going to do is make sure that as you draw all your cubes Make sure that you do not forget about your points and make sure that your vertical sides are actually vertical. I worked a little bit on the top box. What I've done is I've given it kind of a middle medium gray tone to it. I've made the bottom of the box darker and we're going to pretend like this is our light side. We're just going to work with three values, white, medium gray, and as dark as we can get our pencil to go. And I want you to do that on all of these boxes that you've created. Medium, dark, light. And when we're done, we'll take a look at it. I've gone through and shaded all my boxes. The ones that are below my horizon line have the tops shaded in darkly. So you get the general idea of how the angles change as the box goes up and down and side to side. You'll notice that over here, these sides got shorter, just like, there it is looking at you from the corner. And as you turn it, this side gets longer and this side gets shorter. So all of those effects are ways of creating depth and three-dimensional illusion 
on your paper. Okay, here's our finished box study like I just talked about when I showed you the full size image. Now, all of this is leading up to something. All of these tedious, kind of pointless things like drawing the sphere, drawing the cube. Pretty soon I'm gonna force you to go through a hole, drawing a cone, drawing a cylinder. All of those are building towards looking at every object that you encounter in these simple forms. When you do that, it makes drawing everything in 3D easier. Uh, you could even use these types of things on the human body and make it work. You can use cylinders and cones and cubes and spheres when you're breaking down the structure of the human body and have it work. So I'm gonna show you a still image of a still life that I drew a long time ago. And you can see the step-by-step -step progress where the structure lines turn into forms that turn into a finished drawing. And it's all done on top of each other. Uh, I didn't erase any of the lines. I just kept adding more and more shading on top in layers and layers and layers until you couldn't see the structure lines anymore. So I'll show you some images of that and good luck with your exercise. Keep it up.